prophecy of Pentecost. Come, Holy Spirit, and from heaven, direct on man the rays of your life. Come, Father of the poor, come, giver of God's gifts, come, light of men's heart. Kindly paraclete, in your gracious visit to man's soul, you bring relief and consolation. If it is weary with toil, you bring it ease. In the heat of temptation, your grace cools it. If sorrowful, your words console it. Light most blessed, shine on the hearts of your faithful, even into their darkest corners. For without you and your aid, man can do nothing good and everything becomes sinful. Wash clean the sinful soul, rain down your grace on the packed soul and heal the injured soul. Soften the hard heart, cherish and warm the ice cold heart and give direction to the wayward. Give your seven Holy Spirit to your faithful, for their trust is in you. Give them the reward for their virtuous acts. Give them a death that ensures salvation, and give them an ending to breathe. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the, the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, as I said at the beginning of the Mass, today we are on the 50th day after the celebration of Easter. And today, the great feast we are celebrating is called Pentecost. Because it is 510, hmm? those of you are conversant with uh, United States administration, you know that they have a, house, a, a, a famous house called Pentagon because it is built into a shape of a Pentagon, five sides. So Pentecost is the ten, uh, five ten. And this is the day where, as we heard in the first reading, the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples. And this is the day they began their mission of proclaiming the good news of the Lord in every tongue. People who were present in Jerusalem could hear them speaking in their own tongues, and yet they were simple people from a remote area of Israel called Galilea. But because 
good news is heard by everyone who has an open heart, everybody who was there could hear them speak in his own tongue, in his own mother tongue. There are many images of the Holy Spirit that we have in our mind, isn't it? The famous one is the door. Wherever we go in a secret place and we find the door, we think of the Holy Spirit. This image came because during the baptism of Jesus, the heavens were opened and the voice of God the Father was heard and then the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came and it descended upon Jesus. That was one of the manifestations of the Holy Trinity, which is one of the mysteries of our faith that we will celebrate in the coming weeks. So the God the Father spoke, God the Son was there being baptized, and the God the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove. And traditionally what you know is that the dove represents also peace, communion, harmony. So the Holy Spirit is the peace, is the communion, is the harmony. The second image of the Holy Spirit, we had them in the readings of today. We are told that when the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. Second image of the Holy Spirit we meditate on today is the wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire. The third image of the Holy Spirit we meditate on today is the fire. And that fire distributed and rested on each one of them. The Holy Spirit has an image of a dove which represents peace, harmony, and unity and the peace and the, and the communion. The second image is wind. Wind, like fire, they can be destructive. Maybe we are lucky in Rwanda, we don't have many, many destructive winds, but there are some countries where they have wind. When it comes combined with rain, it is a total disaster. But apart from that, wind is a source of energy. People who are promoting green energy, among them they advocate for using energy from wind. Even in spiritual life is the same thing. Holy Spirit is the source of energy. Because these people were shy. They were weak. They did not have power. But when this wind came upon them, they were empowered. They stood up. They went out. They started to speak. They were empowered. In our creed we say that Holy Spirit is the one who gives life. And when we talk about life, we talk about energy. Someone who doesn't have energy doesn't have life. The Holy Spirit that descended upon the disciples empowered them because they received power. Holy Spirit is the source of power. Just like wind is the source of power. Let us remember also that prior to the discovery of engines, when people were sailing on the sea, what was the source of energy for their movement? It was wind. Only wind could allow them to move from one place to another. So the Holy Spirit will receive ourselves 
in baptism, in confirmation, and every time we ask, we ask it from God and he sends it to us, allows us to move in this life. No one can move in this life if not by the Holy Spirit. We are yet to discover the spiritual engine. So, so far we are pretty content with the source of energy, which is the wind, the Holy Spirit, who makes us move, who makes us sail on this life. The third image is fire. Same like the wind, fire also can be destructive. But then again, its source of energy. If a fire didn't exist, how would we see? This is fire. It's light. The Holy Spirit enlightens us, just as we ask it in the sequence. That those corners where there is darkness, may the Holy Spirit who is the fire go there and enlighten it. Holy Spirit is the source of energy as the wind, is the source of light as fire. Not only that, fire also is the source of energy. People who do not have electricity, they have to find firewood for them to cook and live. So they need fire. To live, we need Holy Spirit. In the creed, we say it again, that Holy Spirit is if he can't help. He gives life. He is the giver of life. He is the fire which gives us life. This is what we have received. We have received the Holy Spirit, who is the peace, who is the communion, who is the harmony. We have received the Holy Spirit, who is the power, who empowers us and allow us to move from one place to another, we have received the Holy Spirit who is life, who is the fire, a fire which candles the other. Then we, we make the light of the world. Then uh, another point to mention today about the readings and the meditating on the Holy Spirit is the issue of tongues. So the disciples, who were shut, who were weak, having received the Holy Spirit, which came upon them like wind and fire, what happened to them? They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance, as the Spirit gave them the way of speaking them. We are told that they were in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And as and at this sound, the multitude came together. So they were dispersed in the, in the city. But when they heard that wind like something coming from heaven, they all gathered around where the disciples were. Because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galilean? So when they say Galilean, it's not an admiration. It was a way of saying that this is speaking not poor people who cannot speak the languages we will speak. And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Then comes the list of those people who could hear them speaking. The Holy Spirit is the bringer, he brings harmony. People can understand each other when they are guided by the Holy Spirit. There is no barrier. So, we too, today we are invited to be people who speak the language of harmony. People who speak the language of peace. People who speak the language which brings the communion. And on the issue of tongues, I know that nowadays there are many people out there who speak tongues, claiming to revive the Pentecost. One fundamental criteria I think we should always remember when we go to analyze what they do is this. 
when the Galileans were speaking in tongues, they could previously not speak because of having received the Holy Spirit. Those tongues they were speaking, they were intelligible. So if someone claims to speak tongues, and they are intelligible tongues, I think, guided by the Holy Spirit, we needed to put a question mark there. Yes, on the Pentecost, people could speak tongues. But please, they were intelligible tongues. They were not an intelligible tongue. So when someone claims to speak the, Holy, the, the languages under the influence of the Holy Spirit, the first reaction should not be to say, no, 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 don't say that. The first reaction should be to say, is what you are saying intelligible? Because the Holy Spirit is not a bringer of confusion. He brings the people together in a communion, not in a confusion. Imagine if I was to start to speak a language you don't understand here. And I claim it's because of the Holy Spirit. What would you think? Would you say our priest now is going mad, isn't it? If I could speak Nyarwanda, at least you would say, okay, maybe he's in Nyarwanda, he understands that language. If I could start speaking in French, you could say, okay, maybe he has studied French. If I could start speaking Latin, you might say, maybe he, started, he, he studied Latin. But if I start to speak intelligible tongues, what would be your reaction? Would you say, really, the Pentecost is here and the Holy Spirit has taken our priest now? I don't think so. And that is normal. You will be guided by the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit works. And yes, give the tongues. People speak in the tongues. But those tongues are intelligible tongues. They are not an intelligible tongue. This is what happened on Pentecost. The, the, the disciples were speaking in new languages, but they were intelligible tongues. They were intelligible languages. Although there were many people from every nation, as we heard, but those nations, people could hear them. Maybe someone who could speak Latin could not understand Arabic. But at least someone could understand, could understand the language which was being spoken. It was not that, it was an intelligible tongue. So maybe today, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is calling us to, to be... To be aware of his works. He works through communion. He works through bringing harmony. He works through bringing peace. It's not a, a sower of confusion. It's not someone who brings confusion. So let us also adopt this tongue. The tongue of love, everybody can understand it. Take, take an example. Those of you who have who have traveled abroad. If you go in a country where they speak a language you don't speak, suppose you are arriving at the airport. If someone is kind to you, even if he doesn't speak your tongue, you will understand that he is kind to you, isn't it? And if someone is nasty to you, even if he doesn't say any word, you will understand it. So this is the way we should communicate. We as Christians, our language should be the language of love because that is the language spoken by everyone understood by everyone the language of kindness the language of searching for harmony the language of searching for communion may this Pentecost be a moment for us to get renewed so that instead of speaking an intelligible tongue we speak intelligible tongue especially the one of love, the one of peace, and the one of communion. And may the Lord be with you.